Flags. I think flags are pretty cool, and I'm certainly not the only one. There are flags for countries, cities, alliances, corporations, and even online political arguments. They've been a part of human civilization for thousands of years, ever since the ancient Spartans started using them to train for battle. Historians even speculate that the Allies actually won World War II because the Nazis wasted all of their money on flags. This needs to stop! Now! By the way, YouTube, those were jokes. Please don't ban me for disinformation. Anyway, if you clicked on this video, there's a good chance you've seen the 2015 TED Talk by Roman Mars, in which the radio host, whose name kinda sounds like a Yu-Gi-Oh character, lambasts a number of American city flags for being Not great! I mean, look at these. Who thought this was a good idea for a flag? And while the primary focus of his lecture remained on local flags, and the possibility of improving them, the spirit of his impassioned plea for more aesthetically pleasing flag design has taken root at the state level as well. Because, let's face it, a lot of American state flags are pretty bad too. Now, when I say that, many people automatically assume some sort of political motivation. As the topic of symbols and their historical associations can get rather contentious, especially in this day and age. But I'm approaching this purely from an aesthetic perspective. Oh no, I'm not brave enough for politics. Flag design, or vexillology for those of you who speak ancient Italian, is something I myself, as an armchair artist, have long been interested in. And while my YouTube channel mainly focuses on literary analysis and animation critique, and my April Fool's videos have tended to be increasingly niche memes, Joe. Oh sorry, Donald sent me a meme. I thought it would be fun this time around to just make a normal video on a topic I wouldn't normally cover. As I said, I love delving into the details of what makes a well-designed flag. My channel iconography is even meant to evoke the principles of flag design. But in late November of last year, I happened to see a news story discussing Minnesota's search for a new state flag. By that point, the options had been narrowed down to six finalists, though variations of these designs were still being considered. And while in my view, Brandon Hunt's star and snowflake motif was the clear choice among them, I still felt it could use some improvement. So, after tweaking his design, I tweeted it out. And to my surprise, it ended up being seen by someone involved in the process, and sent forward for consideration, among a few dozen other variants of the finalists. Looking a little further into the subject of state flag redesigns, I learned that several other states, including Massachusetts, Pennsylvania, Illinois, Michigan, and Wisconsin, are currently either in the process of redesigning their flags or seriously considering it, while Utah had just adopted a new, way cooler flag. I can only assume the Four Corners monument left them feeling embarrassed. Mississippi also changed their flag back in 2021. Uh, no one really knows why, but the new one does look nice. One of the biggest complaints about American state flags is that many are just a seal on a bedsheet, or sobe, something that violates one of the cardinal principles of good flag design laid out by the North American Vexillological Association. One, keep it simple. Two, use meaningful symbolism. Three, use two or three basic colors. Four, no lettering or seals. And five, be distinctive or be related. It's important to recognize that many vexillographers will acknowledge that these rules are more a set of guidelines, and that there are widely celebrated flags that violate some of these five design principles. I myself tend to have mixed feelings on rules one and three, as you'll see in a moment. But all in all, they're a good place to begin. Of course, I'm far from the first YouTuber to make a video on this subject. CGP Grey has done a number of videos on flag design, and to be honest, I take issue with quite a few of his vexillological opinions in his flag ranking video. In my opinion, he, like many other current flag enthusiasts, puts far too much emphasis on simplicity and minimalism. Then she put her favorite flower in the center, which is a bit too complicated for my liking. Bruh. That being said, I do share his distaste for soaps, even if he goes too far in hating any lettering. Like, come on, California's flag isn't F-tier just because it has the state's name on it. On the other side of the debate, Fro Your History and JJ McCullough have both made interesting videos arguing against change for change's sake in the realm of flags, and provide reasoned criticism of the modern trend of heavily simplified minimalist vector art on a field or tricolor. Serious crap. And while I sympathize with their standpoint, particularly disagreeing with the keep it simple and two or three basic colors lines of the five NAVA principles, I also think a lot of existing flags could still stand to be improved in a way that honors the heritage of what they represent while being more distinctive and aesthetically pleasing than they currently are. All three of these, along with Mars' original TED Talk, will be linked in the description, and I encourage you to check out all four videos to get a fuller understanding of the differing viewpoints at play in this ongoing discourse.
As a Virginian with a veritable vested interest in vexillology, the topic of potential alternative flags for my home state has been on my mind for quite some time. So naturally, I started here. Almost Virginia. Now, while it is a seal on a bedsheet, I'm honestly kind of fond of it, though I will admit that overall, Virginia's flag is pretty boring. The blue field itself is fine, and I do like the red and green Virginia creeper used as a fringe for the seal, but other than that, there's not much going for it. Well, it is the only US state flag to feature nudity, if that's something you're into. By the way, I really hope YouTube doesn't slap me for this given that this flag flies over literally every government building in the state, but who knows these days. I know you're back there. To start, we're obviously scrapping the seal. But the vibrant blue field is fine, as blue is the color of liberty, freedom, etc, etc. I'm a big fan of horizontal stripes, especially ones that are more unique than the standard tricolor bars, so I threw in four light blue lines to represent the four major river systems in the state. The Shenandoah Potomac, Rappahannock, York, and James. Another thing that can elevate a flag design is negative space, so I gave the stripes a white outline, then connected them to a central circle. I actually like the color scheme on the fringe of the old seal, so I'm going to keep that red and green motif, but simplified and stylized, with a green ring just inside the white circle, enclosing a ring of alternating five-flowered red Virginia creeper and green dots. And, for the piece de resistance, a stylized rendition of a cardinal bird, the official bird of the Commonwealth of Virginia, inspired by the seal of the state senate. Animal symbolism in general is tragically underutilized in American state flags, and the red-crested bird is already incredibly recognizable iconography here, so I think a cardinal is the perfect motif to make the flag distinct, aesthetically pleasing, and symbolically rich. Not that I could be biased in the slightest. But seriously, I really am pleased with this design, and I think it would make for an excellent flag for my home state. If you are in any way connected with the Virginia government, feel free to put this design forward as an alternative for our admittedly far from outstanding current standard. And that goes for all of the designs in this video, by the way. Petition your representatives, use them as inspiration for your own redesigns, whatever you want. I'd appreciate credit, of course, but as much as I love America, we could really use some better flags over here. Moving on, while I don't have as much of an attachment to or investment in flag redesigns for other states, given that I don't live in them, I still did try to come up with the best designs I could think of. Having looked into common symbols and color schemes associated with the states, prior flags flown in them, and so on. In cases where I came across a really cool redesign by someone else, and used it as inspiration for my own, I'll be sure to show the artist's name and their version, in addition to linking to it in the description. And seeing as there are 50 of these things, I'll obviously be moving a little faster from here on, going by region. By the way, I know it's not a state, but Washington DC has an awesome flag, derived from George Washington's ancestral coat of arms. I'd probably put it in S tier, and definitely don't think it needs a redesign. So, having started with Virginia, we might as well continue with the rest of the South. Song, song of the South, sweet potato pie and I shut my mouth. In vexillological terms, the American South is quite the mixed bag. Some pretty great, some terrible, and a whole lot of mids. We've already taken care of my home state, so let's move on to the rest. I feel like North Carolina's flag, aside from the unnecessary text, is just too close to Texas's, so let's fix that. Keeping the color scheme, I used red and white counterchanging for the field, then threw in a gold ringed blue circle containing the state's flower, a flowering dogwood, in white fringed with gold. South Carolina, on the other hand, has one of the better existing flags, and while you could try to simplify the palm tree a little to make it really shine, and apparently the state is currently in the process of trying, I don't think it needs changing. Good job. Mississippi just got a new flag a few years back, and it's pretty great. I'm not a huge fan of text on a flag, but this is probably the best use of it I've seen on any US state flag, so it gets a pass. A tier, no need for a redesign. Alabama's flag is fine, a little bland, but the St. Andrew's Cross is something we can work with. All it really needs is a stylized camellia, the Alabama state flower, in the middle of the cross, with some circles to provide room for it. Georgia's is… eh. I do somewhat like the golden pillar and arch motif in the canton, but it's too complex at present. Titanium Helm, a user of the Vexillology subreddit, has made a number of really good redesigns, and their variant of Georgia's flag is really unique, swapping the red for orange. But I stuck with the existing color scheme, removing the lettering from the pillars and arch, and placing them in a circle. Lastly, I took the bars and reincorporated them as much thinner stripes in the middle of a white field. Florida's is interesting, because while it does feature a seal, their state seal is actually kind of nice looking, but it's still way too cluttered and we can do better. 
Here I took inspiration from this proposed redesign by another user on the Vexillology subreddit, whose name I do not know how to pronounce. And while their design is pretty awesome in its own right, I went with a slightly different approach. Regardless, both incorporate the more unique variant of the Burgundian Saltire, make excellent use of negative space, and just look all around striking. Only slightly better than the blue seal on a bedsheet that is seemingly the default, West Virginia shows some promise in featuring symbols of mining and rhododendrons, but still has a long way to travel. I did take some inspiration for this one from another post on the Vexillology sub, by user... Okay, they're just messing with me at this point. Anyway, taking the colors of WVU, I went with a deep blue and gold bicolor, bisected on the left third. Then, making heavy use of negative space, I created a diamond and mountain pattern with a pickaxe in the middle of the former, symbolizing the importance of mining to the state. Kentucky has yet another sob, though the goldenrod sprigs are a nice touch. Most redesigns seem to feature horses, which is a solid choice. And for my redesign, I was specifically inspired by the prior Redditor, who apparently knows what they're doing when it comes to vexillology. I chose to swap the thin vertical lines for horizontal ones, representing the state's position on the border of the Old North and South, with stylized goldenrod fringing a central white circle featuring a rearing horse. And rather than the typical blue or green seen in most Kentucky redesigns, I went with a mixture of the two that makes the flag stand out, using it for both the field and the horse. Tennessee's flag is weird, in that I don't really personally like it, but at the same time I respect it and recognize that it's a good design. I toyed around with the idea of trying something else, but in the end it just didn't seem necessary. B tier at least. Arkansas has a motif we can work with, the blue diamond with white stars in it, but the extra stars around the edge make it somewhat cluttered, and plastering the name of the state in the middle certainly doesn't help. All I did was remove the stars along the diamond's border, make the top star representing the US larger than the lower three, and add an extra blue chevron separating them. Louisiana's flag, while not great, does contain one of the more unique motifs, a white pelican voling herself to feed three chicks, derived from ancient Christian symbolism regarding the state bird. It's definitely something a redesign could feature, and looking into it, I see that a lot of people try to create a hybrid pelican fleur-de-lis, though I just opted for the latter, owing to the state's French heritage, going with a simple light blue and white palette with three red drops of blood carried over from the original. Oklahoma's is okay as is, but simplifying the Dreamcatcher and going back to a more earthy shade of the original red background would definitely elevate their flag. Also, I re-added the star that was present in the original version. And to close out the South, Texas's flag is straightforward and iconic. Not S tier, but a solid A, and in no need of messing with. Which I've heard you're not supposed to do with Texas anyway. Now it's on to the Northeast. My baby's in Massachusetts, and all this is useless. With exactly one and a half exceptions, the Northeast has some of the worst flag design in the country, probably tied with the Midwest in terms of the sheer number of boring soaps. So, let's get to work. Massachusetts soap at least has a white field instead of a blue one and the deep blue and gold color scheme could be used to better effect. I like the approach Reddit user Smix created, featuring a pine, though I'm a bit confused as to why the pine shows up in so many redesigns when their state tree is actually the American elm. A mayflower would also work, given it's their state flower. However, I chose to use horizontal stripes rather than vertical ones, changed up the proportions a little, and featured a circle with six stars to represent Massachusetts being the sixth state admitted to the Union. Connecticut likewise has a seal on a bedsheet, and it's one of the messier ones. Featuring purple is unique, at least, but for my redesign, I went with a simple autumnal bicolor of crimson and gold, with a leaf from a charter oak, the state tree of Connecticut, encircled on the left third of the field, and a series of narrow horizontal stripes cutting across it. After all, the state is known for looking beautiful in the fall. Aside from being a square, for some reason, Rhode Island's is actually pretty good, but with a little tweaking, it could be better. The previously mentioned Redditor Titanium Helm proposed a pretty great redesign, and honestly their entire catalog is worth looking through, though I wanted to maintain the ocean blue and keep the anchor, rather than swapping it for a ship's wheel. Vermont has another boring soap, and a surprising lack of green given their name, but I do appreciate the greenish tint to the blue field, and the deer and pine motif could certainly be worked into a redesign. I really like this version by Reddit user Rarely Common, but I decided to do something with a green mountain motif given Vermont's name, featuring a blue sky above and a white stag in the center. New Hampshire is another New England state with another sobe, but I have to admit that the stylized plants around the seal are really cool. So cool, in fact, that I am certainly keeping them. But while I'd love to incorporate the ship into a redesign as well, looking into it a little, its presence doesn't seem to make much sense. 
I will admit that this version by Reddit user MikeFrench98 looks awesome, but New Hampshire isn't exactly known for its extensive coastline or shipbuilding in general. So instead, I swapped the blue for purple and chose the state's official flower, the purple lilac, as it's a color that's rare to find in flags. At least New Jersey's soap uses a color other than blue, and it's got a horse, or at least a horse's head. Taking the drab yellow of the original's field, I used that for a horse in the center, in a circle of gray, then ringed that with the former color and added a diagonal stripe. Lastly, I switched the field to orange, another color that's quite rare in US state flags, even among my redesigns. And then with New York, it's back to the blue sobes, and one that has way too much going on at that. They even put a face on the sun. Okay, so New York was the 11th state to join the Union, so I put a ring of blue stars on a field of white, with five thin orange stripes to represent the five boroughs of New York City. Then I added a blue ring around the stars, gave it some negative space, and rotated the five thin stripes to be horizontal within the ring, evoking a city skyline. Yet another state with a sobe, Maine has one of the least impressive, though both the pine tree and moose offer a foundation for a redesign. When looking into the state's symbols and iconography, I learned that they are considering resorting to an older flag with a simple pine tree design. So I created my own variant of this with an inverted color scheme. Admittedly, it's a bit out there and minimalistic, but I like it. Another seal on a bedsheet, Delaware at least boasts a pretty neat color scheme of beige and teal. We're keeping that and the diamond and scrapping basically everything else. Going for a crisscross pattern with a simplistic rendition of the state flower, the peach blossom, in the center. Pennsylvania has another sobe, and while I was tempted to incorporate our rearing black horse into my redesign, in the end I settled on a simple two-color approach, featuring the state's iconic keystone logo and three horizontal bars, the middle much thicker than the upper and lower, intended to be vaguely reminiscent of train tracks in order to highlight the state's industrial importance. And then we have Maryland, who is the go-to flag for breaking the rules of vexillology principles and getting away with it. While a tad over-designed in my opinion, it's still another A-tier flag with no changes necessary. Now with the East Coast done, it's time to move to the Midwest. By and large, the Midwest seems to have seen New England's really lame flag design and thought, yeah, that works. Though there are a few scattered exceptions. Illinois is not really one of those. They start us off with another sobe, though at least it's white instead of blue and has an eagle. Taking the orange sunrise, I created a more striking design on a field of white, took the splashes of red and blue from the original flag, and reincorporated them as the lower portion of the sun and an eagle spreading its wings. Indiana's isn't great, but it's got potential with the whole torch and stars thing. I swapped out the nearly ubiquitous blue for burgundy, and created my own rendition of the blazing torch of liberty in yellow. Iowa's is pretty mid. I already find tricolors kind of boring, and the fact that the left and right stripes aren't as thick as the central one is throwing me off. Also, it has words. On the other hand, eagles are cool. So what I did was swap to a black and gold color scheme with a horizontal tricolor, symbolizing agriculture and rich soil, with a gold circle in the center containing a diagonally angled French tricolor and a golden eagle outlined in black as an homage to the original design. Oh, Ohio. It's not bad, and it's certainly distinctive, but why'd they have to make it not rectangular like everyone else? I mean, I get that it's supposed to look like a cavalry guide on, but still. Looking into it, I learned that some people already make and fly variants where they just fill in the missing parts of the rectangle with white, so I hope people won't hate it too much if I just run with that. Michigan has yet another sobe, though the rearing stag is a motif that should absolutely be incorporated into any redesign. Our vexillology user Pathos316 made a really cool stag rampant, inspired by the state's coat of arms, and so I took their heraldic device and swapped out the three vertical bars of their design for a more stylized series of lines, then added verdant green. This way, you get a deep blue for the sky above and the Great Lakes below, green mountains alluding to the state's natural beauty and industrial status, in addition to the lines being somewhat reminiscent of railroad tracks for the latter, as I did with Pennsylvania, and the rearing stag as the centerpiece. One of the worst sobes, Wisconsin's flag is like those of Montana and Kansas, which throw a seal and the name of their state on a deep blue field and call it a day. However, I can't help but notice the badger, their official state animal. And you know I'm a sucker for animal motifs on flags. In the end, I went with a bicolor of dark and light blue, with the former protruding out as a triangle, and a chevron, gold on top and dark blue below, outlined in white, to embody the state's motto of forward. Then I drew a stylized badger in the dark blue on the left, and there we go. 
The one that kicked off this video, Minnesota is another messy SOAP. And while my initial redesign, shown earlier, involved modifying the design submitted by Brandon Hunt, adding negative space between his star and snowflake, and coloring every other section of the ladder dark green, on second thought I'd rather stick to his original three colors, and leave the central symbol unambiguously a snowflake, rather than going for a hybrid snowflake flower thing. With Missouri, at least it's a tricolor instead of a basic sobe, and I like the use of negative space in the border of the seal, but there's still way too much going on here. However, we can make use of both the bear and crescent moon on the seal as the centerpiece of a redesign, switching the negative space over to the white of the central stripe rather than the blue of the bottom one, and darkening the red to avoid the colors clashing too much. Kansas's flag is kind of a mess. It's a sobe, and it has a sunflower above the seal, and it's got the name below it. If the only reason I can recognize a state's flag is because they spell their name out in big bold letters on it, that's cheating. But the sunflower gives us something to work with. And, seeing as Kansas is the sunflower state, apparently, I figured I would keep the blue background but shift the hue to a slightly turquoise shade to complement an orange-centered sunflower, with a little stylized design ringing the inside of the edge, and 24 yellow petals around the outside. Why 24? Because that was the easiest way to make it all line up in Krita. Nebraska's is yet another soap, though I do like the hybrid industrial agricultural motif. I chose to lighten the blue of the base, with a wheel symbolizing industry that effectively doubles as a windmill symbolizing agriculture, something common in a lot of Nebraska redesigns, some yellow to enrich the latter aspect, and a healthy amount of negative space to spruce it all up. North Dakota's is a step above a soap, but still far from great, and though you could work with the eagle and sunrise motif, I instead chose to have the Dakota's flags match the color scheme I used for Nebraska. I gave North Dakota a stylized arrowhead and galloping horse, alluding to both the native plains tribes and later ranchers who have inhabited the region, while South Dakota's boring sobe was swapped out for a rendition of a Dakota medicine wheel within a sun. And with the Midwest checked off, it's on to the Mountain West. To the town of our free road, a stranger one fine day. The Mountain West is far more interesting in terms of flag design, because while you do have the run-of-the-mill bad ones, you also have several good to great flags, particularly in the Southwest subregion. As of last month, Utah went from a D tier at best sob to an easy A tier flag, and while I don't think it's perfect, it still doesn't really warrant changing in my eyes. Moving on, Colorado's is pretty good, definitely above most, and while I'm still not sure I could put it in A tier, as using normal hues of the three primary colors comes off a bit garish to me, it's still strong enough that it doesn't need fixing. And despite trying, I wasn't able to come up with a design that I could confidently say looks better. Arizona's flag is probably A tier, but I feel like with a little tweaking it could be pushed to S. Pop the star in a ringed circle, add a copper stripe, shift the colors a little to have more coherence while retaining the desert sunset palette, and bam, much better. At least, I think so. I've only been there once. New Mexico has easily the best existing flag of any state, the only one I consider S tier as is, and I wouldn't dream of changing it. Nevada's is more of a semi sob and pretty bland, but the star and sagebrush give me something to work with at least. I tried to use the latter, but ended up going with a silver and gold star to represent the importance of mining to the state, with a few lines to spice things up, some negative space to avoid clutter, and a division of blue and gray, referencing the state's motto, Battleborn, an allusion to the fact that Nevada joined the Union in the midst of the Civil War. Now, contrasted against the southwestern flags, those of the northern Mountain West are pretty bland. Montana has just another soap. I figured it'd be neat to have the northern Mountain West states feature matching designs and colors, so taking inspiration from Wyoming, which we'll get to in a minute, I incorporated the colors of Montana's existing flag, adding crimson to match its neighbors, and putting a stylized mountain emerging from a row of stripes. Idaho, likewise, has a seal on a bedsheet. It's known as the Gem State, so I went with a fairly simple motif of a gem and mountain range within a circle, incorporating the stripe pattern I used in the prior flag. And while Nevada's boring flag stood out among the generally great designs of the Southwest, in the North, Wyoming stands out amidst the state's boring neighbors. It was a pretty solid design, until they threw their seal on the flag. And not only that, but they put it slightly off-center. But, in fairness, we still have a strong base to work with. So, center the buffalo, get rid of the seal, and change out the red and white rectangular border for a few narrow stripes near the top and bottom, and there we go. And that leaves us with only the westernmost states. Reluctant as I am to admit it, 
California does have one of the better state flag designs. Honestly, all it really needs in my opinion is to strike the lettering, recenter and size up the bear, and simplify the design a bit. Removing the detail on the fur and grass in favor of solid coloring and a narrow green stripe, and lastly darkening the colors. Alaska definitely has one of the cooler flags, but it still feels like it's not living up to its potential. I do really like the original version by Billy Benson, who came up with the design for a contest when he was only 14, so I definitely want to keep the Polaris and Ursa Major motif, but one of Alaska's other defining symbols is the polar bear, which I'd like to include. In the end, I settled on a snowy white field with a deep blue silhouetted bear, on which the stars are displayed, with blue and gold stripes along the top and bottom edges. Hawaii's is another of the few existing flags that doesn't really need changing. It's got solid aesthetics and is rich in symbolism and history. Easy A tier as is. Oregon is actually the only state with a flag that has different designs on the front and back, and the latter is much better than the former. Which, as you might have guessed, is a sob. The worst kind, in fact, as they slapped both letters and numbers on it. But the back just has a stylized beaver, gold against blue, which is decent. I took that beaver design, cut it from the blue background and shaded it a dark maroon, then set it on a rich green field and put it in a circle. Lastly, I added some thin lines as well as extra detail to the circle, all in deep blue, to give it the appearance of an O. And last but not least, Washington State's flag has a nice green and gold color scheme. And that's where my compliments end. And to be totally honest, the green they use is a bit light for my tastes for a state so rich in natural beauty. For my redesign, I started with a deeper green field and bisected it with a thick white stripe that merges with a large white diamond in the center, with a yellow border near but not on the diamond's edge. Then, taking the lighter green from the original flag, I added three stripes in that color for the state's three major rivers, the Columbia, Snake, and Yakima, as well as an inverted chevron and a stylized western hemlock, the state tree of Washington, in the same lighter shade of green, with the looming white peak meant to symbolize Mount Rainier. And there you have it, my own redesign proposals for every state flag I think needs fixing, which is most of them. I'm curious what everyone else thinks. And with more than 40 of them, I know not every one is going to be a banger, so let me know which ones you like, which ones you don't, offer modifications of my own designs, or come up with entirely new ones. And as I mentioned earlier, feel free to use any of my designs, with or without your own tweaks, if you want to start, or contribute to, the process of changing your own state's flag. Not that I think it's particularly likely any of my designs will end up being used, but hey, you never know. If this video happens to get picked up by the algorithm on one of its fickle whims, Maybe check out some of my other videos. As I mentioned at the beginning, I typically cover western animation and literary xenofiction, though from time to time I branch out into even more niche topics than the latter. I also write xenofiction in addition to discussing it, and you can find links to my own novel, Winter Without End, in the description. Think The Call of the Wild crossed with Cormac McCarthy's The Road. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I hope to see you next time, on a completely different topic. I'd like to explain to all of my friends, to everyone involved, how it all happened, how things fell apart. La 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 New card. What do you think? Whoa. Very nice. It's very cool, Bateman, but that's nothing. Look at this. What do you think? Nice. Let's see Paul Allen's card. Look at that subtle off-white coloring. The tasteful thickness of it. Oh my God, it even has a watermark.